Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. Some people are still joining, so we'll give them a minute or two more and then we'll get started. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today for the new Hobo Connect features for Streamline Data Collection webinar. My name is Sierra Brands and I'm the Hobo Software Product Manager. As we get started, a few housekeeping items. If you're having any trouble with your audio settings, please be sure to check the audio tab in the GoToWebinar control panel. This webinar will last approximately 30 minutes. And we welcome questions. If you have any questions as we go through, please be sure to enter those in the questions box. We've reserved some time at the end, but we'll open it up for questions. And lastly, please note that this session is being recorded and the recording will be made available to attendees afterwards. As for an agenda today, we're gonna to have a quick overview of Hobo Connect and of our Hobo MX Bluetooth loggers. Then we'll talk about the end of support for Hobo Mobile and what it means to you. We'll spend the bulk of today's session doing a deep dive into the new Hobo Connect, and then we'll finish up with a quick review, followed by some time to answer your questions. So, an overview of Hobo Connect. Hobo Connect is our free app that handles configuration and management of our MX Bluetooth loggers. It's available on iOS, Android, and on Windows. Hobo Connect offers convenient wireless setup and download for our MX Bluetooth loggers, as well as a flexible configuration process that allows you to set up your logger to match your use case. It also supports an easy download process that you can do without a shuttle or a laptop, which can be particularly helpful if you're deploying in hard to reach locations. Hobo Connect also offers a variety of tools to manage your data, including the option to view live data as it comes into the logger and to view and graph previously downloaded data. You can also easily export all of that data to common formats such as Excel, CSV, or PNG format for images, as well as share those directly from your device via email, text message, or to a shared drive such as Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox. Hobo Connect is designed to work with our Hobo MX Bluetooth loggers. That's one of our three logger platforms. And our MX Bluetooth loggers are set up for wireless data access via mobile devices and Windows machines. 
You also have the option to add an MX gateway or push directly from Hobo Connect to our cloud system, Hobo Link. MX Bluetooth loggers all offer configuration and download via Bluetooth, and they support many of our most popular measurements, including water level, water temp, soil moisture, temperature and relative humidity, light, CO, and CO2. You also have the option on some MX loggers to add an analog input, which can expand your sensor options to include things like external temp, AC current, and various pressure measurements. Now let's talk about the end of support for Hobo Mobile. With the relaunch of Hobo Connect, Onset is formally announcing the end of support for Hobo Mobile. Now you might have some questions about why we're doing this and what the impact of that would be to you. So Hobo is transitioning all MX data logger users to a single platform, Hobo Connect, to provide a unified cross-platform experience. And we've designed this transition to be minimally impactful for you. Hobo Connect supports all MX loggers and offers all the core Hobo mobile features. Hobo Connect is also available on all the platforms Hobo Mobile is and more, including iOS, Android, and Windows. Plus, we've completely revamped Hobo Connect with an improved user experience and added in many new highly requested features. You still might have some questions about how this transition period will work for you, and we'll cover a few common ones today. You might ask, when do I need to transition to Hobo Connect? So we strongly recommend that you transition as soon as possible, as Hobo Mobile is no longer receiving security patches or updates. However, you can continue to use your existing installs of Hobo Mobile while you transition, but it is important to note that new installs of Hobo Mobile will no longer be available. You might wonder what is going to happen to your files through the process and ask questions such as, can I still retrieve my Hobo Mobile data files? And what should I do with my existing files in Hobo Mobile? So yes, you can still retrieve your, your Hobo Mobile data files. All of those files are unaffected by the end of support. We recommend that you export any files you want to keep prior to migrating over to Hobo Connect using the built-in export and share feature in Hobo Mobile. And you might have some questions about what this means for your logger, such as, do I need to relaunch or reconfigure my loggers after I switch to Hobo Connect? No, Hobo Connect works seamlessly with all MX Bluetooth loggers, and there is no need to relaunch or reconfigure when switching to Hobo Connect. Now let's move into the deep dive portion of this, where we take a look at the new Hobo Connect. So first of all, I want to thank any of you who have submitted your recent feedback. We do take a look at that as we're planning out our product improvements, and we use that feedback to feed directly into the new Hobo Connect. So based on that feedback, Hobo Connect is getting a refreshed interface that improves the user experience, plus we're adding in new features to streamline your logger and data management processes. During today's deep dive, we're going to walk through the four Hobo Connect tabs with a specific focus on major updates and important features. I do want to note that this is not a comprehensive tour. We're not going to cover every feature that Hobo Connect and your logger support. And if we don't cover something today, I'd point you to the Hobo Connect manual and the manual for your logger for detailed information on all of those products. Now, before we dive into the tabs, I do want to cover a few quick options that can help you get started with Hobo Connect. We've recently launched a digital quick start guide that covers common tasks and topics in Hobo Connect with your MX loggers. This guide is accessible directly on our website, onsetcomp.com, and with the upcoming update, it will be accessible also directly through Hobo Connect. You'll see a prompt when you launch the app after the update that'll let you open the quick start guide. You can choose to continue seeing this prompt every time, or you can dismiss this prompt, but the guide will always be available um, via the settings tab under about Hobo Connect. You'll also notice that we've refreshed the color scheme for both the light and dark mode. I mentioned this because I'm going to mix and match screenshots as we walk through this presentation. I wanted to let you know that you can use whichever mode you would like, and you can switch between the two modes without having to restart the app via the dark mode toggle that's also found under settings. 
So now let's move to the first tab in Hobo Connect. That's the Devices tab. So the Devices tab shows all loggers in range of your device, and Hobo Connect always opens on that tab so that you can easily find and manage your devices. If you have a lot of devices, you might find the search and filter options, which are available at the top of the Devices tab, helpful for locating a specific logger. In the upcoming revamp, we've um, reorganized the logger tiles. There's one tile per logger that's in range to be more useful to you. You'll notice at the top, we've centralized all the logger information into a status bar. This bar is going to tell you the logger family, which in this case is MX1105, the serial number of the logger, and the logger status. This example logger was currently logging when I took the screenshot. On the right-hand side of the status bar, you'll always see the battery level and the Bluetooth connection strength for this logger. And you may additionally see a lock icon if it's a password protected logger, or an alarm bell icon if alarm has been tripped for that logger. In addition to that alarm icon, you'll also see the familiar barber stripes on the left-hand side of the tile when a logger is in an alarm state. In the main section of the tile, we've updated the layout to bring increased quality and to give more prominence to these key items. You'll see that we have a logger name that's now in a bigger font and more centralized. We've also added in a logger icon on the right. And in the main section of the tile, you'll see that we've moved to a horizontal layout for the measurements to give them increased space. And we've also added a short form for each measurement so that you can more easily identify the measurement that you're looking at. On the main devices tab, you'll also see a new bulk download feature that was added to increase the efficiency of logger downloads. When you click the bulk download button, you'll enable bulk download mode which will give you the option to select up to 20 loggers. And then you can download all the data from each logger without having to connect to the logger. You'll just hit the download in logger buttons when you're ready to kick off that process. I'll note that even though this is called bulk download, you may even find this to be a faster process than manually connecting to the logger and hitting the download button there. I also wanted to note that you may see a failure if you're working with password protected loggers if you haven't connected to that logger using your specific device before. That's due to Hobo Connect not knowing the password for that logger, and there's an easy fix. Outside of bulk download mode, you should connect to the individual logger, enter your password, and download the data. Once you do that, Hobo Connect will store the password in the app for future use and you shouldn't see any more failures for password protected loggers in the bulk download mode. So outside of bulk download mode, if you click on a tile, you'll then connect to that device. And when you do, you'll now see a new screen that consolidates all options for the logger. This screen has three sections. The top section is the logger info section, and that includes the name of your logger, as well as the icon for the logger form. You'll then see the current measurements of the logger, including any derived channels such as dew point. For most loggers, we've now added an alarm indication by channel. So you can see in the example screenshot, that's the temperature channel for this logger that's triggered the alarm. Below that, you'll see some key logger info, including an icon for an alarm status, the status of the logger, this one's logging, the battery percentage, and the serial number for that logger. We moved all the additional logger info to the bottom of the screen, and that includes items such as deployment number and date, the logger model, the group, the firmware version. In the center of this screen, we'll now see new buttons for all your logger options. The top section is always going to be filled with the common logger options, such as configure and start, stop logger, view live data, and download data. Below that, you'll start to see logger-specific or situation-specific options. Logger-specific options include things like eliminate logger and feed logger or calibrate, and you'll see those when they're relevant to the type of logger you've connected to. You'll also occasionally see an option for updating your firmware, 
This is only going to be visible when a firmware update is available for that logger, and you'll see a button at the bottom of the options list. If you click, click configure and start, you'll see that we've reorganized the options on this page to be easier to parse and manage. We've also set a default option for each configuration um, item, which means that you can review the default setting, and if you're happy with it, hit the start button and your logger will immediately start based on the settings that you um, entered. You can also go through the list and update any items as needed and then hit the start button. This page is um, organized in four tiles, the top of which the logger name and group allows you to set a specific name for the logger and you'll see that throughout the app and also assign the logger to a group to make them easier to find. Below that, you'll see a logger settings tile, which lets you configure the global settings for this logger. And that includes things like when the logger starts logging, when it should stop logging, and how often it records measurements. We've added some helpful options to make this process a little faster, such as having some canned options for logging interval. So you'll now easily be able to select whether if you want one minute, five minute, 10 minute, or one hour logging with one click. But if that doesn't meet your needs, you can always select the customized option and enter the very specific logging interval for your logger. Below the logger settings, you'll see one tile per channel offered by that logger. So the example logger here has two channels, a temperature channel and a relative humidity setting channel. Um, in each tile, you can control the settings for those channels. You can enter a sensor or a channel name you can toggle on and off logging for that channel, and you can configure the alarms. And if there's any more specific information needed for that channel, you'll see that option on the channel settings tile for that channel. And lastly on the screen, you'll see an alarm settings tile that lets you set some global settings for alarms, such as whether we trigger an audible alarm and how long we should show visible alarms for. Popping back out to the new connected devices screen, you'll have an option to download data from your logger. That download process is the same thing that's commonly referred to as readout. But once you've downloaded from this connected device screen, you'll now have a new option to export and share without needing to navigate to the Hobo file section of the app. When you click export and share, you have the option of deciding which file format you'd like to export you can also control the default option in that menu via the default export settings toggle in the settings tab. And the share options that you see here are going to depend on the device that you're using with Hobo Connect. Now let's move on to the data tab, which has been renamed from Hobo Files. And we've also reorganized this section to show files directly on the screen, which should increase navigability of this area of the app. You'll also see a new export and share option available directly here, which is gonna give you quick access to our most popular export options without the need to open the file. If you do wanna open the file, you'll click on one of the tiles here, and that'll give you the ability to view and manage the data file. And you'll also have some options under the three dot menu that include updating the time zone, selecting the channels you'd like to view in the image, exporting to an image file that's gonna give you the PNG format, or you can also view configuration details for that file. The third tab in Hobo Connect is the dashboard tab, and that allows you to view current readings from in-range loggers without needing to connect to those loggers. You'll have two options here for how to view each of those channels. You can choose the graph option, which is gonna let you monitor changing conditions over time, or you can choose to view the current condition using the odometer option. Lastly, we have the settings tab, which contains a lot of helpful options, um, such as access to documentation and user settings. At the top of the settings tab, you'll see the about Hobo Connect option. And under that option, you'll have access to many helpful forms of documentation, including a quick start guide that we covered earlier in today's webinar. 
manuals for both Hobo Connect and for all of our loggers, and also a list of supported devices in case you ever have questions about which Hobo device you should use Hobo Connect with. It's under the settings menu where you can connect your Hobolink account to push your MX data to our Hobolink system, that's our cloud IoT system, and you can do that either directly from the app or via an MX gateway. There's also a user settings tile in the settings menu that lets you control key aspects of Hobo Connect, including which units you'd like to see your measurements in. You have two options there, US units or SI units. You can toggle on and off dark mode to switch between light and dark mode in the app. And you can also set your default export format as Excel or CSV. And that's going to be the default option that you see when you're exporting and sharing. Though if you ever have the need to uh, use the non-default format, you can always change that in the export and share process. So now we've walked through all four tabs, pointing out some major features and some improvements that have been recently made. I think it's time for a quick review and then we'll open up the floor for questions. So Onset is ending support for Hobo Mobile. Please export and share any files you want to keep prior to transitioning over to Hobo Connect. But also note that there's no need to reconfigure or relaunch your loggers. You can simply connect and download information, download your data using Hobo Connect when you're ready to. Hobo Connect supports all our Bluetooth loggers. It's available on iOS, Android, and Windows. And if you're looking to download Hobo Connect, you're going to use the App Store to download that for your iPhones and your iPads, the Google Play Store to download that for Android devices, and you can download the Windows version from our website, onsetcomp.com. We're targeting late July for a release of the revamped Hobo Connect. And that's going to bring you the updated user experience and the new features that we've added, all intended to increase efficiency of the core task of Hobo Connect. If you're looking for additional resources on anything we've covered today, I'd point you to our website, onsetcomp.com, where we have full product details. Specifically, I'd point you to the Hobo Connect page and the product page for your loggers. All of those pages are going to have a documentation tab that's going to give you access to some key information about how to set up and manage your loggers. I also recommend that you sign up for our newsletter so you can stay up to date on any releases and new information that we'll want to send you. So that wraps up uh, the content for today's webinar. And now we can switch over to the question part of today's session. I'm going to have Paul Gannett, who's our standalone product manager, help me out here. Paul, would you like to read a few questions um, from the audience? And we'll take a stab at answering them. Yeah, thanks, Sierra. Yeah, I'm the uh, product manager for our Hobo standalone loggers, which includes all the MX loggers that work with the uh, the Hobo Connect software. And uh, yeah, we've been getting a lot of good questions. We got some in advance as well as uh, we're getting some right now. So uh, let me uh, jump in. And uh, the first question that is, we've, Sierra's kind of answered, but maybe she can expand on it a little bit, which is which operating systems are supported by Hobo Connect and how do I get updates? Sure, just to reiterate on the version support. So we're gonna support iOS, Android, and Windows. But the update question, I don't think we covered today, so that's a good one. So that's gonna depend a bit on the settings on your own device. If you've enrolled in automatic updates for Android or iOS, you don't have to do anything to get the updates that we're sending out. Those shall be automatically downloaded and updated um, as soon as they're available. However, if you've opted out of auto updates for your mobile platform, you'll have to go back to the App Store or the Google Play Store in order to download the latest update. Fairly similar process for Windows. If you have automatic updates installed or um, enabled, you'll automatically get all of the Hobo Connect updates. However, if you've opted out of that process, any new update will be available on the onsetcomp.com website. Thanks, uh, Sierra. Next question. Uh, how do I get data from my phone to my Google Drive in XLS format? 
Got it. So you'll want to use that export and share feature that's available throughout the app. So if you're downloading, uh, if you've connected to the logger and then you hit uh, download data, you'll see that export and share option available once the download is completed. So you'll hit export and share. Then you'll choose the file format type that you want to export in. So you can choose Excel, CSV, HubAware. Um, and once you do that, you'll see a share option. So you'll click share and you'll see a lot of options there. And the options depend on exactly what kind of device that you're using. But typically you'll see options like uh, sending a text message if you're on a mobile device, sending an email, or if you have the Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox apps installed, you'll see those as an option. You just want to select that option and then you'll get prompts from that app to let you name the file and save the file in that shared location. Great. Um, okay, you know, a couple, a few people were asking about this. Uh, you know, with this change from Hobo Mobile to Hobo Connect, uh, how does one preserve the the Hobo Mobile files? Great question. So, I, in general, I'd say that you should be exporting and saving all your Hobo Mobile or Hobo Connect files to a shared location or a local file location on a regular basis. And you're gonna use that same process to transition out of Hobo Mobile into Hobo Connect, which is you're gonna use the export and share feature, and then you can choose where to send those files. And then you'll maintain local file access to all your Hobo Mobile files. And once you transition over to Hobo Connect, you can save the files to the same spot. And now you'll have full access to your data in a local location or shared drive, no matter whether you've used Hobo Mobile or Hobo Connect. Kind of a related question on that is, can you take the um, Hobo mobile files and copy them to the Windows uh, um, directory for data files in Hobo Connect? Will those be compatible? Are they, you see what I I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get the question. I don't know that I would recommend that. We can follow up on with people who have asked that. Mostly I would recommend that neither app is meant for incredibly long-term file storage data. So once you're done with your files, I would recommend exporting them to a shared location in a CSV or an Excel format. And that's gonna give you long-term access to those data files. Got it, that makes a lot of sense. So um, next question, can you create a custom default configuration? When you configure and start your device, if this is the first time that you've connected to your device, you'll see the defaults that we've set. They're the most common options that we see and they work for a lot of people as the default, but that might not match your use case. So uh, what you can do is update the default configuration and start your logger. And now when you've come back to that logger in the future, Hubble Connect will remember the last settings for that you configured and started that logger with. So if you wanna reconfigure that logger, you won't have to make any updates as long as you wanna continue with the last configuration set of options that you used with that logger. Makes sense, thanks. How about, uh, here's a different twist. How will um, Hobo Connect or will Hobo Connect uh, be replacing Hobo Wear or just uh, replacing Hobo Mobile? Right now, Hobo Connect is only replacing Hobo Mobile and will continue to support Hobo Wear. If we ever make a change there, I'd really recommend that everyone sign up for the newsletter so that you get um, updates of this type. But as of now, HoboWare will continue to be the software that we use with our USB and our optical products. And Hobo Connect will be the sole software option for our MX Bluetooth loggers. All right, thanks. Um, I have some questions here. I guess maybe it's more of a request. Uh, uh, is there a webinar instructing how to set up a dashboard? Several people were asking about that. 
I don't think we have a webinar on the books, but I always love to hear requests. In general, we love to hear requests and we want to respond to those. So I will definitely take a note of a request for how to set up a dashboard and we can get that in the queue. There are instructions in the Hobo Connect user guide for how to set up a dashboard. Um, so if you're looking for that before we get the webinar, I'd point you over to the manual and that can walk you through the process of how to set up a dashboard. All right, thanks. Hey, this, we also had several questions on Bluetooth communications, and because that's more of a hardware-related question, I'm, I'm going to actually uh, take that one, which is, um, it, it, here's just a typical one. Assuming your data collection device is straight overhead, how deep can a MX logger be underwater and still be read? Um, and th this is a, a question we get uh, frequently, which is, and the answer is, the... Uh, Bluetooth doesn't really go through water. I mean, you might be able to get an inch deep into the water, but that's usually not uh, useful for most applications. The loggers are going to be deployed deeper than that. Uh, Bluetooth really is intended uh, for going, you know, through the air. It can go through some barriers, you know, through walls and like in your house. We get questions about going through metal doors. You know, if you're uh, deploying a logger inside a refrigerator, for example, you can probably read out the data uh, when you're just outside the refrigerator, but its range is certainly going to be reduced. Um, so, you know, you know, Bluetooth range is is kind of what it is. You know, you you have other devices probably that have Bluetooth, so you um, uh, you, you have a sense. You know, it'll be similar to your other Bluetooth devices. It's about a about a hundred feet if you have straight line of sight, and anything in the way we'll reduce that okay so let me come down to another software more software related question um let's see is there any sort of bulk transfer of the data to onedrive or email you know we've talked we talked about uh you know bulk download um but uh can, can you transfer the files to, to OneDrive or email using that? Sure, yeah, good question. So in the recent survey that we sent out, we asked about some bulk features and bulk download came as the top option um, that our users want to see. So that's what we spent time on first in Hobo Connect, adding that feature and that's now available in the app. Number two, or at least number three, was definitely this bulk transfer or perhaps bulk export and share. And that's on the docket for later development this year. And so you should see that come out for Hobo Connect um, by the end of the year. That'll give you the ability to bulk export and share multiple files. All right, thanks. Here's a question. If I look at the gateway in Hobo Connect or, uh, and see loggers or let me start this over. Is there a way to, when the loggers are connected to a gateway, is there a way to see what loggers are connected to that gateway? I think your best bet there is going to be using Hobo Link, which is where all of that data ends up, to view which loggers have been uploaded by which gateway. So if you're in Hobo Link, you should art and you have an MX gateway set up, you'll already have a Hobo Link account. You'd sign in using the account that you uh, created and set up your loggers for. And then under data or under devices, there's an MX logger tab. You'll click that. Then you should have a tabular output there that shows all of the gateways associated with your account, as well as all of the MX loggers associated with either uh, Hobo Link via Hobo Connect or Hobo link that were pushed up through a gateway. And so that's an easy way to sort and filter and show which loggers have come through which gateways. Or if you've also used Hobo Connect, you can see all of those loggers in one spot there. So your best bet, Hobo link, the MX logger tab, and you can find that in the devices area of that application. Awesome, thanks. Hey, I just checked did a clock check and we're a little past our uh, 2.30. Um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, we've been getting a lot of good questions. Uh, I think we'll go to about 2.40 uh, and, and answer as many questions as we can. 
and any questions we don't get to, we'll uh, we'll follow up with uh, with you afterwards. And some of some of these questions are very specific, so it's more of a discussion. So we'll 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 follow up uh, with you on those questions. So um, next question: uh, Why can't I delete old downloads from Hobo Connect, but can from Hobo Mobile? Want to comment on that? Um, sure, yeah, that's also on the docket for later this year. We did move over all of the core function from Hobo Mobile to Hobo Connect, but there's a few loose ends there, and so that'll also be on the docket um, later on. Uh, usually doesn't present too much of a problem for people because the default order for the data file section, formerly the Hobo file section, is to show all of your new files first, so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle right now. But that is a feature request that we've gotten and that we'll be working on shortly. Next question. Uh, is a separate cellular telemetry device required to view live readings and download files remotely from your desktop? I think I understand this question. Well, let, let, let me take a stab at it. And if you're the person who asked this question and we didn't fully answer it, please feel free to reach out for us. So I think it's important to note that Hobo Connect, once you've downloaded the app, um, doesn't require an internet connection to do all of your core features. So you can connect to a logger, you can configure that logger, and you can download data from that logger as well as export data all without an internet connection. There are a few features of the app that obviously require an internet connection to work. Those are gonna be connecting to our documentation since that's stored on our website. If you wanna to share to uh, via text message or email, or if you're looking to push data to Hobo Link, those features all fundamentally require an internet connection. So you're not gonna have access to them until you're back um, in internet connection or Wi-Fi range. But all of those core tasks, those logger management tasks, those don't require an internet connection. You can do them in the field without a problem once you've gotten Hobo Connect downloaded to your device. And now, yeah, if you're looking, I, I should just say, and if you're looking to use Hobo Link, you will require an internet connection to set that up. And if you're looking for, say, more of uh, an always connected device, I would point you to our RX station line, and those are inherently cellular or Ethernet or Wi-Fi enabled, and we'll push your data directly to the cloud. Yeah, good point, good point. Next question, can I get median averages and standard deviations using Hobo Connect or Hobo Link? Um, I use software on my computer to analyze that data currently. Yes, you definitely can. So when you're configuring your device, there is a logging mode option. So you'll toggle that option. You'll see two options there, fixed mode and burst mode. If you wanna collect some stats measurements, you'll need to uh, select the fixed mode. That's also the default selection, so it's likely already selected for your logger. And once you're in fixed mode logging, you have the option of adding on some stats measurements there. And so that would include all the ones you listed, median, average, mean, um, and standard deviation. So if you enable one, two, or all of those, we're gonna collect those measurements just as we do the regular measurement recorded by your logger. And you'll see those in any exports for loggers that are set up with that stats configuration. All right, thanks. Here's a fairly specific question, but it's come up uh, a few times. So I think it's worth addressing. And it is, is the CSV format from Hobo Connect compatible with the eClimate Notebook CSV format requirements? Yes, I think they are. Um, you'll need to enable your Hobo Link push. Um, that's where the eClimate integration um, offered by Hobo Data Loggers um, has been added. So you'll want to enable a Hobo Link account so that you can push your MX data up. And then if you search for eClimate notebooks on our website, you'll get some more specific tips and a how-to on how to set up that data integration and get your files over to eClimate notebooks successfully. All right, thanks. Got time for maybe a couple more. Um, 
when you download data from the MX device using Hobo Connect, uh, is that data deleted from the device? And maybe that's a little more of a hardware question. So you can try, or you give it a shot, or I can address that one. If, now that I think Why don't you it. take it, Paul? I, I bet you'll yeah. have a great answer here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, if the data, if the uh, logger continues to log, uh, that data will continue to stay there. You have the choice of uh, stopping the logger after you lo offload the data or allowing it to continue to log and capture more data. And um, as long as you don't restart the logger, that data will continue to be there, uh, even if the logger stopped or if it's continuing to log, um, which is handy because you can have multiple users offloading that same data if it's uh, uh, a, a site where multiple people are interested in that data. So, good question. Um, you want to do one more poll and then we'll wrap up here? That sounds perfect. Uh, looking for a good one. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, put the pressure on. We've got to pick one from all these good questions. Uh, so here's a question. Are there any alert systems in place that would tell us in real time if we are out of our desired specifications? So you have two options here, and it's really going to depend on the loggers that you have chosen to purchase from us. If you have an MX Bluetooth logger, you can set some alarms so you can set a high threshold and a low threshold and when you're outside when your logger records conditions outside of the boundaries that you set an alarm status is triggered and depending on your setup uh, you can either you'll either see this when you connect to the device if you're only if you only have a bluetooth logger so you'll see that in the app we showed earlier that um, barber pole along with the um, bell icon but if you're looking for more real-time notifications, you have two options. You can add an MX gateway to your MX Bluetooth logger, and that enables automatic pushes to our cloud system Hobolink. And if you have that, you can opt into alerts. And so that's gonna send you a text message or an email or both when a, an alarm has been triggered. We also offer a whole RX remotely connected line of products that'll let you uh, put a station out in the field or um, you know deploying it wherever you need and that's always pushing data to the cloud and so there you additionally have the option of the um, alerts feature which will send you an email or a text message when you're outside of your specified per, uh, range awesome well i think that's it for time we have for questions. So uh, I'll leave it to you, Sierra, to, to close us out. Great. Thanks for your help with all the questions today, Paul. And I wanted to thank all of our attendees for joining us today. Really appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us uh, and talk about Hobo Connect. Um, I also want to thank you for submitting questions. If we didn't get to your question today, please note that uh, we've recorded those questions and we'll reach out and follow up uh, and so thank you for your time and I think we'll end things here.